It's tempting to think that terrorists are people who don't come from a comfortable background, but in fact, when you look at Western terrorists, in particular, they tend to be middle class. And if you look at the leaders of Al-Qaeda or ISIS, they're often the empowered, not the disenfranchised. So, you know, there's a comfortable view that the only reason people are doing this is somehow they're not, you know, they don't have opportunities. But that just is not the case. Take Osama bin Laden. I mean, here's a guy, he's the son of a billionaire. He went to the best high school in Saudi Arabia, the best university. You can't imagine somebody from a more elite background, and his background is more the rule than the exception. The present leader of al-Qaeda is a surgeon, an Egyptian surgeon, Ayman al-Zawari, came from a very prominent Egyptian family. Think about Mohammed Atta, the leader of the 9-11 attacks. He, his father was an Egyptian lawyer. He himself was studying for a PhD at a German university. So if you look at the, the kinds of revolutionary movements we've seen throughout the 20th century and late 19th century, typically the people involved in these groups are people who come from a sort of bourgeois background. And Jihadi John is a perfect example. He's a bourgeois terrorist. There's been quite a lot of academic studies on who becomes a terrorist and why. And when you look at it, it's really, the answer is a bit like who gets a Volvo. Whether it's ISIS or Al-Qaeda or sort of jihadist ideology in general, the people who are turning to these kinds of ideas in the United States tend to be pretty ordinary Americans, about as educated as most Americans, as likely to be married, as likely to have kids, average age around 30. The question about what drives terrorism is a very complicated one because people, it's like, why are people criminals? It's, it's not, not, there's no easy answers, but in the case of jihadist terrorism, it's got something to do with a certain reading of Islamist theology. You know, people are not comfortable with that. Certainly the Obama administration isn't comfortable with saying that, I think, because you mentioned Islam, you know, we don't want to have a war against Islam, which everybody totally understands and agrees with. But the fact is, is that the people who are involved in these organizations often are religious zealots who believe that they're reenacting some sort of 7th century Islamist utopia, uh, something that was described by the Prophet Muhammad. It's not an accident that the head of ISIS has called himself a caliph. And so if it's not deprivation that's causing terrorism as a general principle, what is it? And I think, you know, ideology, religious ideology of a very violent kind is really part of the answer. There is no perfect answer, but it's part of the answer. <laughs>